I'm joined here in the studio by two experts on modern art to discuss this remarkable news. Lucas Mendez is a specialist in 20th century art who writes for the magazine Image and is the author of a book on Picasso. Fatima Nasser is an economist with special interest in the art market and intellectual property in general. Let me turn to you first, Fatima. I suppose many people will be asking whether any work of art can possibly be worth so much. Well, of course, anything is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. If someone wants to pay $179 million, as the former Prime Minister of Qatar did on this occasion, then that's what the painting is worth. If no one were willing to pay a cent for this painting, then it wouldn't be worth anything. No, I can't agree with that. Value isn't the same thing as price. A thing's price can be out of line with its true value, or, as in this case, can actually diminish its value. What do you mean, diminish its value? When a great work of art goes into private ownership like this, what tends to happen is that it disappears from view. It's true, private owners do lend to museums and galleries for limited periods, but in most cases, the work disappears into private storage. Museums can't compete with these inflated prices, and the result is that important works like Picasso's Women of Algiers are not seen by the public, by critics, and worst of all, not seen by young artists. That reduces their influence and their value. I suppose you don't deny that people have the right to spend their money as they choose. If public institutions like museums can't compete, then it's up to the government to give them more money. And that means it's up to people like you, Lucas, to persuade politicians to do that. Don't you think that some things belong to everybody? If everything just went to whoever pays the most, as you suggest, we'd be willing to sell historic buildings or documents, for example. In my opinion, it's criminal to sell national treasures. They just shouldn't be for sale. And this painting, I believe, is an international treasure. Let's talk about another point. Why is it, Fatima, that people are prepared to pay so much? Do they really love art that much? Well... Of course not. It's an investment. People believe that the price of a masterpiece, like women at Algiers, can only go up. They're just looking for somewhere to invest their money. They know that rates of interest paid by banks are low, so... Wait a minute. It's no business of ours what motivates people to buy. They can buy for any reason they like. It might be love of art. It really is a very nice painting, after all. Or it might be as a legacy for their children. It might be as part of a collection, or it might be as a pure investment. We can't go around saying that people must only buy things for motives we approve of. That's just far too much state control of the individual. Not at all. Some things are so important that they can't be trusted to private ownership. Basic infrastructure like roads and bridges, defense, protection of the environment, all I'm saying is that culture has that sort of importance, too. Well, as you can see, this is a topic which causes strong disagreements. We have to leave our discussion there. Thank you both. On a personal note, I can tell you that I wouldn't pay that much for the painting myself. I'm not even sure I like it. A photo of the painting is currently up on our website, so you can decide for yourself. And next week we look at a very different side of the art business. We tell the story of a painter who is so good at copying the style of old masters that he once made millions of dollars from selling fakes. He was eventually caught and jailed, but his skill as a painter has made him one of the most popular up-and-coming artists for his own paintings. That's next week on Art in Focus.